Good morning and welcome to service this morning. And what a great encouragement you are to me and I'm sure you're a great encouragement to each other that we've been able to come away and worship our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. The world out there is in a real hurry, but maybe on a Sunday morning, not so much in a hurry, but having a lie in. Uh, but we've taken the time to draw aside, away from the busyness which can engulf us, and sit at the feet of Christ, where grace and mercy meet. This morning, for a little while, we can cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. Let us bask in his glory, which he longs to give to us, and let us hear his word, which the psalmist tells us is more precious than gold, than much pure gold, and sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Now, Judy Tilbury's honey comes straight from the honeycomb, and it is deliciously sweet. But we are told that God's word is sweeter than that and much more precious, of course. So again, welcome this morning. Let us listen to his precious word, sing his praises and bask in his love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the great creator God and we are your creatures. We come knowing that only you have the answers to the great questions of life. We thank you that you show us the way forward, that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We have no fear when we are walking with you. Come Holy Spirit and guide us this morning as we worship. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning is written in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does, does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. And the parable of the mustard seed. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was, done, when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. And may your words um, give us refreshment and encouragement and um, challenge us as we hear your message for us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. This is a bit of a revamped message from back in 2018. I'm, I'm astounded how much I did actually change, but just warning you, so if you do remember anything, because I know you have such fabulous memories, and everything that we say is so worth remembering that you might remember something, so. A city slicker 
decided to move to the country and try his hand at farming. And he thought that having some chickens would be a good way to start. So he went to a local farmer and asked could he buy some chickens. Now the farmer told the man that he should start small, so, you know, just a few. But the bloke was insistent. He wanted a hundred. So the farmer thought to himself, well, maybe a hundred's a bit too much, but how about I give you a hundred baby chicks and see how you go. So he thought that was okay and he went away with the ch chicks. About two weeks later, the farmer thought, I'd better go and drop in and see how he's going. And when he got there, the man said, I'm not going too well, actually. You won't believe this, but all 100 chicks died. And the farmer said, what, what are you talking about? I've ne there's never been anything wrong with my chicks. Like, how did that happen? And he said, I don't know. And the farmer said, well, I'll give you another 100. See how you go this time. So off he went. About two weeks later, he decided to go back again, see how he was going. When he gets there, the bloke's shaking his head and he says, I don't know what to tell you. All hundred chicks have died again. The farmer said, what? What's wrong? What's going on? Like, what's happening? And he said, I really don't know. I can't decide whether I'm planting them too deep or too close together. Now, given the right circumstances, most things will generally grow by themselves unless we decide to grow chickens by planting them in the ground. And most of us are more than capable than planting a seed in a pot or a garden bed and leaving it to do its thing. So long as it gets a little bit of water, a little bit of sunshine, it just does its thing. There's lots of things that as a gardener we can do to enhance it, like, you know, give it some mulch or some feed. Um, but ultimately, once we've planted the seed, that's it for us. You know, he, how the seed grows is a mystery. And that's what Jesus is telling the disciples in this morning's readings from Mark. He tells two parables that Ray just read that describe what the kingdom of God is like. The first one, he describes it as a man scattering seed on the ground and no matter what he does after that, makes no difference to whether the seed grows or how quickly it grows. The farmer can go off and do other stuff or take a nap and the seed will grow on its own in its own time. The same is true as we sow the seeds of the gospel where we live and in our lives and families. We take the seed and we scatter it amongst our family and friends, our neighbours, our community, and that's it for the most time, most part. It's not our job to make those seeds grow. We can't make them grow. That's the Holy Spirit's work. Sometimes we get to play a part in nurturing the little plant that sprouts from the seed further down the track, but that seed is going to grow in God's time, not ours. It's his job to grow the kingdom, not ours, not mine, not yours, not even the church. And in this current age where the voice of the church and indeed our witness at times of the gospel is being drowned out and ignored and actively silenced, this is good news. We can be encouraged that while it may look like the church is becoming insignificant and failing, God is still in the business of growing his kingdom and all the little seeds that we have planted in the past and will continue to plant, he will turn into the greatest harvest ever. We don't need to become discouraged in sharing Jesus in, in whatever way that we can be it either in big ways or small ways. Because like the little seed can grow into a huge tree, God can turn a tiny seed planted in the heart of someone and turn it into a huge faith. Many years ago I taught scripture and sometimes it was a challenge to feel as if I was making a difference. 
these kids knew nothing about Jesus and it just seemed to fall on deaf ears. But I read an article in the Scripture Teachers magazine back then about a woman who had been teaching Scripture in primary and high school for over 30 years. And she used to feel the same sometimes, come away feeling, what was the point of that? But one day she was at a Christian function where um, a young man in his 20s came up to her and he said, you used to be my scripture teacher. And those lessons are the reason that I'm here today. And it changed how she thought about teaching scripture. She realised that while at times she felt like she was wasting her time, and that the stories she shared the, just bounced off the kids. A seed had been planted in that young boy that grew into faith and now this young man was a fully committed Christian heading for the ministry. In reading that article, I think I caught a little glimpse of what the kingdom of God was about. And it involved me playing only a tiny part as Paul says in 1 Corinthians, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The, the kingdom of God is hidden from our sight and its growth is done in secret. We simply won't always see the results of our labours. As I said before, it's God's job to grow the kingdom, not ours. And what a relief that brings to know it doesn't rely on us for the kingdom to grow. But sometimes I forget that. And I take myself too seriously and function as if it all depends on me. Sometimes I swing the other way and I feel I haven't contributed anything or anywhere near enough. And then there are times when I feel self-righteous, as if I'm the only one who's contributing anything. I need to be reminded that I can't grow the kingdom. I can sow the seeds, but I can't produce the harvest. It might seem like a small contribution to make, but God is in the business of making great things out of small things. And every seed I sow, that you sow, is an opportunity for God to grow it into something great. You see, we serve a powerful God. And his gospel message has power to change lives. We read in Hebrews, it tells us that the word is alive and active. And just as a seed doesn't need my help to grow, the word of God doesn't need my help either. I don't need to manipulate it or be more, make it more attractive or convincing or palatable for it to have an effect. An article from the Gospel Coalition put it this way, because it is God's word, it is an undefeatable word. The Bible has all the essentials of the life and power of God to do his work. Isaiah says the word of God does not return void. It does his work, powerfully so. And if we're going to sow the word of God, then we'd better know it. We'd better know what it says. Which means we read it, meditate on it memorize it and delight in it every single day then we'll be able to get it out of our mouths and into the ears of our hearers the word of God is powerful more powerful than anything we could tell people in our own words or even in our testimonies as one old preacher used to say this book is a lion you don't defend lions, you just open the cage and let them out. This is God's mission in the world, to grow his kingdom. And he's called us to join him in his work by sowing the seed of his word wherever and however we can 
so that we can grow his kingdom. It's not our mission, it's his. Craig Van Gelder, a Church of England leader, puts it this way, God's church doesn't have a mission. God's mission has a church. It's God's mission. And Jesus has commissioned us, the church, to play a role in carrying that out. And that commission carries with it the authority and empowerment of Jesus Christ himself. We are to make disciples and baptise. But before we can do that, we need to sow a few seeds. The second parable Jesus tells us, his disciples, is about the mustard seed, which he says is the smallest seed. But in fact, there are other seeds Um, that are smaller, like I think it's the black orchid is smaller. And most scholars agree that the original word used for smallest can also be translated as least, which makes sense when you understand the nature of a mustard bush. A few weeks ago, John and Michael and I were standing out the front there discussing the weeds in the garden that John had sprayed and talking about who made what weeds. And apart from... Um, you know, the whole fall in the garden when I guess nothing was a weed, everything was wonderful. Um, I think it's usually based on how quickly it spreads, how far it spreads, how invasive it is um, to the rest of the garden. And when you think about it in those terms, the mustard tree or the mustard shrub fits in very well with that. It can grow up to six metres with a six metre spread under the right conditions. Sometimes they're smaller and rather messy, untidy bushes that spread like a weed. Try to hack at it and the tiny seeds will scatter all over the place in the wind. The mustard bush in particular grows wild in Israel and is not at all that remarkable. Looking, it's not remarkable looking, but it is everywhere and its yellow flowers visible in the fields and along the roadsides. I believe in Jesus' time it was against the law to plant the mustard um, because it's the kind of seed that can take over your garden if you're not careful. Its seeds are very tiny and so they scatter easily and they come from um, arid climates and can deal with poor soil, scarce moisture and extreme heat. It's tough and hardy and grows into something big from something so tiny. If you were foolish enough to throw the seed around, it could take over your whole garden. I wonder if that's the point Jesus is making here. Is he saying if you take the seed of the kingdom and scatter it around, it will grow all right, but not the way you expected not in the way that you carefully planned for or predicted. In fact, if you were to take a handful and throw it around, it could take over the whole world. We pray for miracles and when they don't come, we can become frustrated. What we want is an instant miracle. But with the kingdom, what we get is a slow motion miracle, the miracle of growth. The growth of the kingdom, one seed at a time. And it happens in us too, personally. Think for a minute how long you've been a Christian. How long has it taken you to get to the spiritual point that you're at today? Was your growth instantaneous? Have you finished growing now? I don't believe I have and I actually hope I haven't. Do I see signs of the kingdom in my own life and in today's church? Even in today's world? Just like the seed the farmer plants doesn't come all at once, neither does the kingdom of God. The seed arrives in stages like the stalk, then the head, 
and then the full grain. Our job, yours and mine, is to sow and watch and pray and serve. My life is God's project. Your life is God's project. And I want to leave the Father free to stay working on me. So I have to learn to be patient. The seed we sow is the word of God. Let's immerse ourselves in it. Let's seek out the one who is the seed, who is the word, Jesus. Jesus is growing his kingdom. It might not look like it at times. We can look around us and think that the kingdom has stopped growing, that God isn't even bothered anymore. It looks like nothing's happening. Every day we get out of bed and we go about our business and every night we go to sleep and get up and everything seems the same, only worse. We wait for something to give, to improve, to see signs of the kingdom appearing, of God working. We pray, we hope, we sow and we pray some more. Compared to the neediness of this world, the circumstances of many lives, the decline of moral, ethical and religious values, the kingdom of God can be hard to detect. It can seem so small and insignificant, inadequate even, too tiny to make a real difference. Tiny, like a mustard seed. Take heart in the fact that Jesus compares the kingdom of God with a weed. And just as weeds take over, so does the kingdom of God. You can refuse to plant it. You can refuse to allow it to remain. You can rip it out of the soil, but it will just keep coming back. You can cut it down, but it will just grow up again, just like the mustard plant. The kingdom will take over. You see, they tried to get rid of Jesus too. At every step, they tried to discredit him, shame him, test him, stop him, argue with him, mistreat him, rid their cities of him, but he just kept coming back. They even did the unthinkable and cut him down completely falsely accusing him, beating him, whipping him, mocking him and spitting on him and then nailing him on a cross and watching him die. They thought they'd finally eradicated this detestable weed by killing him and laying him in the grave. But they were wrong. Any control they thought they had was an illusion. Any triumph they thought they had achieved in eradicating this menace was short-lived. Jesus would and always will have the last word because he is the last word, the holy word, the powerful, living and active word that will never be eradicated. He is the word become flesh, born of a virgin, crucified, dead and buried and risen again gloriously. On the third day, Danny Aiken once said, the depth and breadth of sin in its death and destruction is cosmic, personal and social. And praise be to God, the cure of salvation in its reconciliation and restoration is cosmic, personal and social. Christ is the solution to all our problems. The answer to all our questions. He is the glue for broken lives. And Jesus will grow his kingdom in spite of any and all opposition. He will grow his kingdom in time, his time, at his pace, in his goodness and mercy and faithfulness and because of his relentless love and grace for us and a world that's lost. So we can stop trying to run things, make things happen, 
and I'm talking to myself here, knock ourselves out running programs and events. We pray. We read his word. We listen. We trust that he knows what he's doing. We long to see the kingdom grow, don't we? I know I do. And so I'm going to throw some seeds around, mustard seeds, wherever I can, wherever I can and let him do the rest. Why not grab a handful, toss them around and see what pops up? Or as Pastor Jim Somerville puts it, maybe Jesus is saying, you want a kingdom? I'll give you a kingdom. I'll give you a mustard kingdom running rampant in the world, growing everywhere, all the time, completely out of control. Out of control, maybe, but never out of his control. So, scatter the seed of the gospel, he says, and then go take a nap. Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you that you are in control, that you have a plan and that you have included us, one still in need of growth ourselves, to be part of it. Bring about opportunities for us to plant your seed and then leave the rest to you. Help us to not feel dejected or discouraged when people reject our efforts and refuse to believe your message. Remind us that we are simply to proclaim your word, your word which has such power, and not worry about seeing the results. Help us to listen to your Holy Spirit as he directs and guides and prompts us instead of sitting inside our churches trying to unravel the mystery of growth, making our plans, preparing our programs. Move us outside the doors and into our communities to love and serve and sow seeds. Show us that it is more simple and less complex than we think. As simple as giving a cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty. We can't do it alone, Father. We need you to walk with us, to grow us, and to give us kingdom hearts. Bring us into deeper fellowship with you and with each other as we humbly do the work you have called us to do as you grow your kingdom. We love you, Father. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who is always at work in our lives. And we pray these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, the word become flesh. Amen.
May you feel the love of God growing within your hearts. Go into God's world, planting seeds of love, mercy, joy and peace in all that you say and do. And love and the love of the Creator uphold you, the love of the Son enfold you, and the love of the Spirit surrounds you, now, always and everywhere. Amen. Oh, 